Yeah. And we are recording. Well, since organic is kind of what we're talking about, just keeping it organic in the middle of a conversation, <laughs> why not yeah. just start it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's up All with right. your guitar? Oh, yeah. I just bought this recently. Um, it's an Ibanez and uh, not a super expensive guitar by any means, but um, I, I had played on an Ovation for about 18 years. Just the other day, whenever I bought this guitar, I had finally stopped to think about it, and I'd been playing on this Ovation guitar for 18 years, and uh, mm. and the, the neck snapped off of it one time. I broke it. I dropped it and it broke, and the neck snapped back. <laughs> Holy Super cow. Glued, it was Gorilla Glue, actually. So if you're looking for sponsorships, Gorilla Glue, <laughs> it works. So I Gorilla Glued this about four years ago. Uh, so I just was like, I don't know what to do. I don't want to take it. It probably can't be fixed, but I'll glue it and see what happens. So I did glue it, and it stayed glued together for it forever. It's still Holy right over cow. there. Did that affect uh, the sound or playability at all? It didn't, surprisingly. I wow, thought it's incredible. That's the end of that guitar, but I, I, it, was, uh, it was the last thing that my dad bought me right before he died, and so it's got a lot of sentimental value. And, uh, and so I was like, I'm not going to give up on this guitar. And, <laughs> and I'd bought other guitars you know, in the last 18 years, but just always went back to playing on this one, not necessarily just because of the sentimental value, but just the familiarity of it. Oh. And then I had to duct tape the battery in oh, at one point. So now you got duct tape uh, and super glue. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab it here it's in a wild. second and show you the cracks all over it, but I just kept playing it. But uh, it finally got to the point where I had an electric guitar also, but I needed a backup. And so I bought this one just a couple weeks back and, and so I'm going to play it now. Lovely. Cool. Absolutely. Take it away. <clears throat> And you're, and I'll by the out. way, we haven't even introduced ourselves. Um, I guess we'll do that after you play your song. You'll be the mystery well, man. We'll do the, you'll be the whole mystery man person playing your song. And then uh, we'll get into all that good stuff. It's like Grease 2. <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> Did I? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Thank you. 
Yes, I think to myself What a wonderful world yeah. I did not write that one. Uh, Louis Armstrong wrote that song, and so I kind of put my own spin on it. And, and uh, speaking of my dad, you know, with the guitar thing, that was actually his favorite song. And so kind of appropriate that I uh, played that song and talked about him a little bit. But uh, are you there? I can't. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Ah, there Hi. you are. <laughs> hey. well, you missed all of my commentary. I'm just talking to myself. But I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I muted my mic while you were performing. So you got some good um, clear quality there, but I said it was beautiful and thank you for playing that. And I also said that was a perfect tie-in, but you kind of yeah, already have, alluded to all I of that. that as well. <laughs> you did. Great mind. All right. Hey everybody, I'd like to introduce you to Jen. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, I'm Jen and yeah. this is Coffee Conversations and this is episode seven. And I've got a wonderful guest, Todd Osborne. So thank you for oh. being here. Thank you for having me. I'm very honored and grateful. Yeah. So you obviously you play the guitar and you sing and mm -hmm. you're a songwriter. Did I kind of tie everything in there? Okay. Or what did I miss? Yeah. Uh, I mean, some people would argue about the guitar playing part. Uh, <laughs> guitar player. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm more of a, uh, my strength. I know where my strengths and weaknesses are. I've been playing for about 12 years now out and about in, in, the, in the community and um, been lucky enough to be around some just phenomenal musicians here in Springfield, Missouri uh, and, and feel really blessed to be able to have shared the stage with a lot of these phenomenal musicians. Uh, but I know that my strength is more in songwriting um, and performance, you know, the passion. I, I just I let it go. Um, and that's something that's taken a while to get used to learn how to do is just let it go in front of a room full of strangers. Uh, and so I know that that's, I've learned how to just kind of turn it, turn off the, the, you know, filter that I've always had where I don't want to open my heart up because people might laugh at it. Um, and so, yeah, I was kind of a little bit self-taught on the guitar, took some classical guitar lessons at Drury university where I am right now. Actually, You're there in the yeah, flesh. I'm on the <laughs> At, I'm at uh, Clara Thompson Hall uh, stage. and um, Are you on the stage yeah. itself? I'm actually on the stage, and there's, a, there's a, you know, the seating is all out there in the stage. Ooh, so me. you've got, you're like pretending as though you are playing to a, a full audience. You've got the it, whole setup. It's well, neat. It is, that looks really neat. I love the intimacy of your little setup with all of the ambient lighting and so forth. So it. Well, Thank you, Jen, and, I, and and you look beautiful and lovely as well. Oh, well, thank you. I'm looking you. down at the computer right here. So, oh, um, but uh, kudos to you on on the coffee conversations and everything. I've watched all of them, and and it's it's great stuff. And oh, that's so kind. We as artists appreciate we appreciate you a lot. So, thank well, you. thank you. Yeah, I um I just kind of on a whim started doing this, and I, I guess I kind of missed going out in the community and seeing live music, and I miss a lot of my musician friends. So. What better way to explore that than bringing them to my living room remotely um, for some conversations right. about music? So it's really cool. So thank you for being here. Yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah, well, um, um, we started anyway. kind of talking about performance. Why don't we um, spin off into that a little bit more about um, what it's like being a musician and the performance side of stuff and you know how, how all that works, whether it's the setup or... Um, you know, your favorite things about performing or whatever you want. It's, this is all about you. So. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, um, I think what I always, I played a lot of shows. So I've been playing for like 12 years and just going and going and going and not thinking about recording, nothing about anything, but just playing out. And so at, at first I kind of sucked and it was, it was me uh, playing at a sushi bar. It was traffic sushi <laughs> bar, which 
not long after this had closed down due to a stabbing in the parking lot. So, oh my! Well, quality place, um, <laughs> clearly. And and so um, they gave me free sushi and a couple of beverages and and uh, said I could play over in the corner. And so I did. <laughs> and I was scared and I was nervous. And so the first five to six songs, maybe the entire set, just sucked. Uh, but you know, you do anything long enough and you get better at it. And and I just kept doing it because some friends showed up and they said, good job. And I could tell in the faces that they were just, you know, stroking my ego a little bit. Uh, but it gave me the confidence to keep on doing it. And then I actually started learning the guitar because I had a lot of poetry that I had written, um, in Drury, Drury university here again, uh, took a class with Joe Van Arkel, who's an excellent teacher. And, and she taught, uh, this poetry class that I really got into. And so I wrote a lot of poetry and um, wanted to turn that poetry into songs. And so I learned the guitar and I took some classical guitar lessons here. I took a couple of lessons from a, a jazz guitarist here in town, Johnny Strickler, and, uh, and then kind of went with it and blended some styles together that I had learned. And I had been learning, uh, listening to a lot of Dave Matthews band at the time. And so you can hear that in, in my guitar playing, a lot of percussive style. Um, I so is, is Dave Matthews kind of your main influencer when it comes to my main squeeze, <laughs> your musical <laughs> style and where you kind of pick up some of that stuff from? Yeah. Um, kind of by default, because like I said, whenever I was learning the guitar and the basics and everything, that's all I was listening to. I was kind of obsessed with, with it. I've gone to a few shows since then, you know, my musical taste has broadened and, and expanded quite a bit. I still okay. like, you know, a Matthews band. I think it's a phenomenal band, but, um, I'm not as cuckoo for him as I used to be. But at the time when I was learning the guitar, that's all I was listening to. So you can definitely hear that in my original songs. Um, cause I quickly, before I even learned to cover song, I had written a couple of songs. Um, so I really just wanted to learn some chords and then put my lyrics over those chords. And so I did that and then played for my dog in my apartment <laughs> and then played for my girlfriend at the time. And then, and then I, uh, played for my parents and and uh and I remember my my dad saying it was it's uh it's okay but it's kind of dark cuz everything I was writing at that time was was kind of a bummer you know it kind of downer stuff and and I cuz because if I was having fun I was out having fun if I was kind of depressed and and feeling kind of cut off from everybody I'd go into the spare bedroom and and write well, and I think so, there's a lot of there's a lot of songs that kind of take that avenue too um so, and you yeah. had mentioned the poetry and the lyrics just being really super meaningful. So, um, yeah. if that's directing your songs, then yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and um, and it did. And then there, along the way, there was a, a switch where I I actually did get pretty good at the guitar, or at least the way that I play it. I play a lot by ear. Um, okay. I don't know much theory, and so that's why it's nice to surround myself with these cats that are just incredible musicians. Musicians uh, and hometown tourists, my band. Two of the guys are out of the MSU jazz department. Okay. Uh, Matt Struber and, and Drew Axley, a saxophone player and bass player. So I've learned a lot from those guys. And then I played with Eric Rousseau, who's just a, the best drummer that I've ever seen, period. Um, and he's jazz roots. And so I've learned a ton of stuff from him just about music in general. And, and, then, uh, and then in Hometown Tourist was also uh, Tyler Bennett, who I've learned a lot about uh, music and teamwork and stuff like that from. He's okay. a soccer coach also. And hometown tourist, he was in that band, and so I'm getting a little ahead of myself, getting a little cart in front of the horse. That's okay. Kind of thing, but <laughs> but um, I feel like I want to mention these names because uh, they're all people that have influenced. You know, I'm playing. If I play a song right now that I just wrote last week, every single person that uh, musically I've played with is is in that song somewhere. You know, it's it's the influences are always coming out in little pieces, even if it's just, oh wow, I heard them do this, and now I'm going to do this. It's kind of like that. It's a structure that's similar to that. Um, so even okay, though so I imitation theory, and that, I mean, it sounds like you've met a lot of really um, talented people along the way. So I think absolutely. you know, you hear it all the time. Imitation is the best form of flattery, right? So, right. Um, when I think, I think it's, it's a good it's, way to learn too. And so that's really that's, that's a really cool thing. I, I feel that art in general, um, it's such a collaborative thing. You know, any kind of art, visual. Um, but especially, uh, audio art or, you know, performance art. Absolutely. Because, uh, even if it's by yourself, there's going to be a crowd, even if it's a virtual crowd 
and uh, and you feed off of the energy, just knowing somebody's gonna be watching this or, yeah. or digging it, or uh, but specifically whenever there's a crowd, uh, you can feel that energy, and you go, and it's and it's so it's a collaboration like that, but also a collaboration with all the musicians. Uh, and where was I going with that? <laughs> well, we were talking about influence and how yes. music oh, yes. is kind that. of a, a joint, say, you, joint effort. Uh, you mentioned uh, imitation is the best form of flattery. Flattery, and uh, and it. I, what I kind of think is that um, everybody's just kind of doing their version of what they like. So yes. you know, I like the Dave Matthews Band. I like Nirvana when I, you know, when I, when I was younger and. Uh, a lot of these bands that influenced me, um, Beatles even. So my originals is just kind of an amalgamation, kind of a, a mixture of my um, imitation of all these bands. Or not imitation, but my, my version of kind of through a filter of my mind yeah. and my abilities um, <laughs> of what influenced me. Well, that's yeah. perfect. That's, that's amazing. And that's kind of how I see music as a... Uh, uh, and how it moves forward is whenever those styles blend together and then suddenly there's a new thing like, uh, you know, ska or, or it's just kind of, <laughs> right. you, you blend a couple of styles together and all of a sudden there's folk rock or uh, jazz funk fusion, you know? And yeah. so that's how music moves <laughs> forward is people putting their interpretation. It's on, always evolving. On that's for style. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nice. So yeah, no, I really appreciate, you know, every, I think every musician, is different. I mean, you can certainly categorize people by the style in which they learn or th their personality or whatever, but it seems as though to, to you, music is very personal. And so rather than focusing on um, the theory and things being proper and following all of these music laws, you're just doing what feels internally good to you. And, um, you know, so I think that that's, I don't know. That's yeah, a beautiful, that's, that's a beautiful approach. It really is because it, it just makes it more meaningful um, and, and more, right. more true. And so, you know, I think that's really, really lovely to hear. Well, I appreciate that a lot. Cause that's kind of all I know. And that's just, it's not like uh, I plan anything really. It, it's just like, it comes out that way. I just work here kind of a thing. Like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, just, music is art is. and music's art. So there's no wrong way about it. I mean, as a music educator myself, like certainly if somebody wants to learn, um, you know, how to play an instrument, you're going to teach them the proper technique and form and theory and musicality and all of that good stuff. But um, if somebody just instinctually is able to play an instrument and they can do so well and it sounds good and you know, so forth. And you know, that's great too. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where, um, new things happen. And I played with, uh, um, my best friend a long time ago was Greg Marshall. And so we formed a band called Canto 17. It was Greg Marshall and Ryan Dunn and, uh, got him John Christopher for a while on drums. Ryan Dunn is an excellent sax player. You should look him up. Okay. And, uh, but but Greg, Greg and I um, were best friends for a long, long time, and he's a, a really good guitar player. And at the time, and well, at the time, I was very much not a good guitar player. So I came to Greg, and I was like, dude, can, I, can you teach me some scales and stuff like that? And he's like, I'm not a teacher. I said, well, I, everybody can teach. Just, <laughs> just show, me what, show me what you do and tell me what you're doing. And he's like, okay, yeah. I'm not a teacher. You won't learn anything. I was like, okay. <sighs> and so he sat down, and he was going to teach me, and he just goes, and shredded <laughs> and then goes okay now do that <laughs> you're like uh I was like okay yeah you're not a good teacher <laughs> um but but he told me some some good uh uh advice that stuck with me and it was that um I felt lacking and I was scared to play with other musicians because I didn't know theory and you know if I'm jamming on an original and somebody says what key are you in and I don't know what, how to answer um I'm going to need really good musicians around me that don't need to ask those questions and which I have been blessed with the opportunity <laughs> sure. to play with a lot of musicians like that. So it's worked, it's worked nice. But, um, he told me, he said, well, you know, look at that as an advantage because, uh, not to downplay the, the years of study that people put in to learn theory and, and to perfect their craft, which I highly respect. Um, but I was going to try to go down that path and kind of take a time out and, and go back and learn the basics and learn theory and, and, uh, but he said, don't, 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 don't do that. Do what you do really well. Um, you know, you got a percussive style, you got something that's very unique. Um, but most importantly, you're not stuck inside this box. 
Um, so when you're writing a song, you can stray out outside this box that you don't even know exists. So don't ruin that um, and make something unique. And so I and I that really stuck with me. And and uh, and I think it comes through in a lot of my songs, uh, the original songs. I've written over 60 original songs, and um, some of them tiptoe around the awkward, weird, but, you know, a little like Radiohead. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, you, you hear some Radiohead mainstream songs, you know, Karma Police and, mm -hmm. and some of those, and you're like, well, that's very melodic. That sounds beautiful. Then you listen to a whole Radiohead album, and some of them you're like, what happened? Yeah. Is that... Do they mean to do that? It can no. kind of go all over the place. Um, they yeah. certainly take liberties, and um, it, it definitely makes, kind of it, what makes I like. it interesting. I've learned to like that because some of my writings just kind of go there. Uh, and really, anymore, I, I don't. I write so much that I don't really even sit down to write a song. I'll get a little chord structure, and then um, it sounds kind of kind of weird and fruity, but uh, uh, it feels like the songs just kind of channel through me. Okay. At, at some sometimes, and uh, and so that feels great whenever I can just sit down and and like we could write a song right now if you wanted. <laughs> but uh, but you know I, I'll stumble up upon a chord structure and then suddenly that makes me feel something and then words come out and so it's so organic. I just I really like the the process of songwriting. Okay. Sorry, I talk. That's awesome. Lot. No, I, it's why we're here. Unless you want to start yeah. tap dancing. But I can clog a little bit. You, you can. Some, here, check this out. Um, I, my first girlfriend in high school was a clogger. So oh, I, hi. I don't know if you can see my feet, but uh, I can double step, rock step, 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 baby. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. So sometimes I do things like that. Well, that was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anything goes, I guess. So yeah. clogging. Okay. Yep. Well, there's the well, there's rhythm in music in that too. So. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It, it, uh, if you get a chance, check out cloggers. I don't know where to find them, but you probably <laughs> Google or or probably on YouTube somewhere. Look at cloggers. It's interesting <laughs> to watch. I also do. The, I do the Running Man also. Very well. Very well. Um, well, I think you but, might trip over some gear in yeah. your current setup if that were to happen. So <laughs> maybe we'll yeah, save that for what, the end. I'm not sure what kind of liability they have here <laughs> since uh, since I just kind of came in. Yeah, they're they're not responsible for any injuries you obtain. Yeah. Oh well. Are you? But there is evidence. Gonna, am I gonna am I gonna clog? No, I'm not gonna clog. Are you sure? You could do it. I I think not. <laughs> oh, okay. I think everybody should comment on the. On but I'm a little bummed section. out. I'm a little bummed out. I know you had talked about my trumpet lamp, and now I'm realizing yeah. it's a little bit out of frame. Oh, last time that the last one that I watched, That's it was better. it was totally in frame, and it caught my attention, and I couldn't. It's uh, super cool. And wasn't that somebody that you had on the show that that made that or something? No, like that? that was a joke I made. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that one went way, that one. Uh, that, we talked uh, about it. Um, there, we, we had some audio difficulties in that episode, so I don't know if, um, the conversation might've gotten a bit shuffled, but, um, that was episode five with Jim Manley. He's a phenomenal trumpet player. Um, I, 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 mean, oh. I can't speak volumes about him, but so he plays trumpet and he noticed I had a trumpet lamp. So we talked about it. And then he mentioned he had several trumpets laying around at home. I was like, well, you know, why don't you just start building your own and selling them? Might make a good penny for them. Absolutely. That thing is cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's the famous trumpet lamp, I guess. <laughs> I dig it. Well, cool. All right. So um, as far as, like, performing goes – what do you like most about performing? Like, what is it that just makes it for you? Um, well, definitely the connection that you get with an audience. And sometimes it doesn't happen. Uh, and so you got to find other things, you know, to, to make it through. I, I, like I said, I've played a long time. At first, I wasn't very good, so not a lot of people showed up. And, uh, and then some, some of the venues that I was playing, just people wouldn't, weren't going there. Uh, and so there, I remember a couple of times 
playing gigs with my band Canto 17, where it was the bartender and us. And then the bartender went outside to smoke a cigarette. <coughs> and, you know, I play, I close my eyes a lot when I play. And I remember closing my eyes and then open them and realizing no one was there. We're playing for ourselves in here. But, you know, people pay money for us to play whether people show up or not. And so that's, that's part, of the, part of the job sometimes is, uh, is pushing through whenever it's a grind. Uh, rarely you have that show. When I say I played a lot, I mean, like, at least one gig every week for about eight to ten years. And you're and still doing – well, not right now with the well, lockdown. Not right now, it, yeah. But, um, but I've just been lucky and blessed enough to, to be able to – to convince people to let me play in their establishments <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> on a regular basis. That's awesome. Um, and so it, it makes me feel pretty good that, that people still will, you know, show up and, and uh, smile and clap and laugh. And, and uh, th I think that's what it's about is the connection. Like you and I, we, we haven't really, we haven't met in person, but we're communicating and, uh, and connecting. And, uh, and that's what it's about with the crowd is dropping that fourth wall and dropping the facade of all the BS of, I'm the performer and you're the audience now <laughs> and listen to me play. Uh, it, I connect with people, you know, No, they're more, it's, they're more part of it than that. Um, absolutely. And that's mm -hmm. what it's all about for me. Yes. What, what do I like about the performance? The best is definitely when there's a lot of people and they're tuned in. I mean, you could tell as a performer on a stage when people are tuned in or if you're background music and there's nothing wrong with yes. either one of those things. But uh, my preference is when they're really tuned in and digging it. And uh, that's when you can really share your heart and your soul and, and connect with another human being. Uh, and hopefully, you know, the goal is to connect with a lot of them. I think as a musician, that's the thing you want to get your music to as many people as possible so that you can get your messages that start in your heart and your mind out to the, the people and hopefully they connect to it. That's nice. So you're, you're a sharer. You like to share. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so for you, it's yeah. about <clears throat> connecting and sharing. And I, I think that's wonderful. Like you, if something's so powerful to you, like why, I mean, certain, obviously everyone has different personalities and given what I know about you, you have some background in understanding how people work. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I have a psychology degree from yeah, the university. So you understand it better than my ramblings here, but you know, everybody's different. A lot of people, you know, might just play music as something that's comforting to them and they would never allow somebody else to hear them play. Um, you know, it's just some, it's just a pastime or whatever. And others are like, it's yeah, fine. let's do this. I need to play for 10,000 people. Um, and they just like suffocate if they don't have, um, that whole big experience and they just want to be out there. Um, but you know, obviously that comes down to, um, introverts and extroverts and <laughs> everything in between yeah. too. And I think we talked a little bit about it, the barriers at first of getting enough confidence and support to, um, for, to be able to perform Yeah, to where, you yeah. know, to where it's not scary or nerve wracking or whatever it could be for whoever. Um, you know, obviously that would vary, but it's, that's a real thing. Stage fright can be a real thing. Absolutely. That, that's, that's the real challenge, I think, for any uh, performance artist, uh, me in particular, uh, because I used to have just total social anxiety. I was afraid to talk to uh, a group of two people, you know, standing here. I get sweaty, my palms sweaty and, um, and just nervous and stuttering and a lot of ums. And I still got the ums probably. I don't know. I, I try not to even pay attention. I just try to let all that stuff go and just be me and let it flow out, um, whether I'm performing or just talking to somebody. Because you know, you could, if you lie and try to put up a front of who you are, which I've done in the past with people, um, I think everybody has. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to continue that act, and and that's a pain in the butt. And so I just want to be me, or if I'm on the stage, or you know, uh, on. A, at Drew University, or if I'm giving a speech, or if I'm just talking to uh, to my little girl, you know, whatever it is, I want to be me. And um, and so, where do we start with that? I get off track sometimes. Um, building up confidence to perform. Yes, yes because I used to be very, very nervous. Um, and so, it's just so fitting that I'm here at, at Drury. I hope that I don't get in trouble. Um, <laughs> well, there there is video <laughs> evidence of it now, so <laughs> I'll try and keep this on lock. 
I did. I talked to the janitor and he was super cool. He's really, okay. really. I'm sure uh, no one's around. We're still in the middle of this quarantine thing. Right. So he said, he said I was the first person that he's seen in here since uh, like a, a month ago when, when one teacher was in getting some stuff. And so I think we had a good conversation too. He's good people. Uh, oh, good. If he's around here, I'll introduce him. But anyway, <laughs> uh, it, it's fitting. It's fitting that I'm here at Drury because um, uh, a long time ago, let's see. Well, I, I'm not going to kind of date myself because I look young. I'm a little older than I actually look, but I like for people to think that, you know, <laughs> when I was 18 and getting carted for rated R movies, um, it sucked. But, it, you know, because I look like I was 14 then. But now that I'm the age that I am and people think I'm a lot younger, I like to let it, let, yeah. It's good let even. Guess it yeah. And say, yeah, that's what I am. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, a while back, I was here at Drew University and, um, and I went through some tough times personally and mentally and, and I was in therapy for a little while, and and then that got me interested in psychology, and so I wound up in the psychology department here at Drury, and and loved it. It was very interesting to me, and and I, I really connected to it, and ended up getting a psychology degree. But in the meantime, I stumbled into the, the theater department at uh, at Drury, and um, was forced to audition for a play. Forced. And, <laughs> well, I, I, well, I took an acting class with. Uh, you mean it's not like I I just stumbled yeah. into something and I, I <laughs> yeah there's a, I I tripped and fell and landed I couldn't in the leave sewer and there was an underground secret society that captured me and handcuffed me and forced me oh to my gosh to the <laughs> um but no I, I I took an acting class and okay. in the acting class it was mandatory to at least audition for a play so I did that and uh and it's funny because this is during the social anxiety era of my life. Uh, and I was learning about that in psychology and in therapy. And then um, I really wanted to just force myself to get over it. And so I thought this acting class is the way to do that. And sure. And I was just ridiculously nervous about the audition. I was going to bail. But earlier that day, I had a dentist appointment and I had to have a filling filled. And um, I thought, well, that's that's a good excuse. I'll cancel it. I'll say, I, I, you know, they'll understand. Sure. Um, medical he's excuse. Like, he's, like, he's like, no, just go up on this. Just show up, go up on the stage say some lines and then leave. We just, that's part of it. It's mandatory for this class. Okay. And so I showed up and I was loopy and I was loopy <laughs> as hell. And I was, you know, cause I had that stuff on and I got the gas that day. Ah, so. I, I'm kind of a wimp. And, uh, and so it gave me the courage to kind of just stumble on stage and do the lines. And I guess I did good. And I, nice. got a part, and I guess you're not supposed to say the name of this play in a theater. It's, uh, the Scottish play from, um, Shakespeare. Okay. Uh, and uh, and so I got a couple of small cameo roles in that, and then I auditioned again later and really liked it, and I was uh, doing good. And then the two two plays later, I got the lead role, and then fast forward three years, I was the lead role in almost every play. And uh, my grad graduating year, I won the Best Actor of the Year award. Wow! So you really progressed with that. And so and yeah, and it's the first thing in my entire life that automatically I was good at and I saw it in people's faces you know automatically mm -hmm. real quick that people are like wow you know you, you feel that and I played basketball and it was a struggle I had to work my ass off you know uh, summers when nobody else was playing I was shooting hoops and I really want to make the team never made the team uh, and baseball same way it was a struggle as pushing 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 all these sports I love the sports sure. but I was just never mm -hmm. automatically good at it so this is the first thing in my life where all of a sudden I'm getting accolades for something and it's <laughs> nice. coming so easy to me. It's just yeah. a breeze. And I studied it and I got really in depth and into the technicality of acting and performing in general. And eventually just kind of the, the nervousness evaporated um, with experience and time. Yeah, absolutely. That's key to it, especially. So well, good. Sorry, what? What's that? Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm just uh, I'm doing an interview here. I hope that's cool. But yeah, yeah. Come on in. Why don't we audience. take Why don't we take a quick one minute? <laughs> We're gonna take a quick one minute pause, though, Todd. Okay. We're gonna take a quick pause. Um, they say that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, so I fall all the way to China. A homeless girl. Game of 
I need some help with my self-regulation Aberration, it's not working out Not working out Not working out yeah. Hi. So this is the ovation that I was telling you about. Ooh. Are we still going? We are still going, and I guess we are back. Okay. Unless you want another oh. minute. And we're back. Um, <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> I might tune this one real quick. What do you have there? Uh, and then... It's my my ovation that I was telling you about. Ooh, with the glue and no. the duct tape. <laughs> with the glue and and the reason I bought the other guitars because I think the duct the glue might be coming up a bit, so I got duct tape on top of the glue. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, duct tape. The glue's under there, but you know the cracks are all along here. But um, this my daughter Charlie made this, and so I I figured this guitar has been through heck. Why not decorate it a bit? And, uh, <laughs> So I glued it, that on there. Make it even more special. Yeah. So it's it's a super special guitar, but I might tune it real quick if that's cool. Absolutely. It's... All right. and you definitely have maybe. zero stage fright anymore. I just... I know it's to a, it's to a point where uh, it might be too comfortable. Well, it might be more comfortable. Uh, I, I mean, especially in a, in given... I mean, I don't even really know you, and I this is not awkward at all. So you're... Yeah. You good? You're doing really well. I might need some instruction from you. <laughs> uh, no, you want a co-host? I could be like your Ed McMahon or uh, Andy Richter. <laughs> oh, a co-host. I was talking about therapy <laughs> sessions. <laughs> oh, yeah. That too? I can multitask if you need. Okay, uh, and we're back at it. When we're back. Now we're back. Uh, All right. Well, where were we? But Yeah. You know, like you said, I, I do get pretty comfortable um, in, in front of a crowd now so much so that, um, a lot of times at gigs, I'm, I'm like this and I'm saying weird stuff into a microphone and there's an audience of strangers. And then, uh, one of my band members will come over and do like this and pull the thing away like that. And that's when I know it's time to play music. It's time to shut up and, and start yeah. playing again. So when I see the microphone float away like that, that's when I know <laughs> you're being cut off. I've been doing a lot of live streams and there's no one else in the room to tell me, shh. So you can be as silly and, as you want. Yeah. And then sometimes in a 30-minute set where only 30 minutes is allowed, I only get like two songs in because... <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> That's okay. It's part of the personality. I think, Yeah. you know, being a musician, obviously everybody's got a different personality, but part of it is who are you and what shines through. You know, you see all of these... Not that you're not famous. <laughs> you're going to be famous now. But um, you see all these people, like um, these big musicians that are, you know, all over everything. Um, and it's that you know them because of their personality and their style and all right. of that. And it's yeah. almost like, I don't know, I'm, t I'm thinking like of these mainstream people. It's almost like that makes them who they are and more recognizable to people than their music. It's like them as a person has more value than the quality of their music, which is so interesting to me. Um, right. Right. And some of those, you know, you, you kind of got to dig a little deeper and see and look and yeah. see, uh, are they real artists or are they kind of <laughs> manufactured? Are they manufactured sure. mainstream artists that were put there by a company that wanted to make money off of something? Right, but my, uh, yeah. my whole point of saying that with my my nonsensical rambling was that personality is key um, for yeah. every musician. So um, I think that's really cool yeah, that you can that just too. you should just be yourself, and yeah. it's your stage, yeah. it's your show. If you just want to talk the whole time, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I used to. I, I'm a big fan of like Andy Kaufman and and uh, and kind of this inside joke with myself kind of a thing. So sometimes I'll just say random weird stuff on a stage and I see the people not getting it, but it, it but sometimes it amuses me. And, and so if I'm amused by it, so be it. I'll just move on past it. And well, it's entertainment. All. That's, that's awesome. all it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and another, another uh, one of my good friends that's really good at that. And I, Tyler Stokes, our, our mutual friend. Don't you know Tyler? Yes. 
He works for yes. me. Yes. One of my teachers. He's wonderful. He's phenomenal. He's, he he's is. a wonderful I, human being. But he's exactly that same way. You know, you, you you feel like whenever you're watching his gig that you're just in his living room and you're sharing a, a beer with him and just kind of yeah. hanging out. And I, I always like that kind of a vibe at uh, at gigs. So I try to, um, you know, create that same air at my. No, that's really cool. Yeah, break down the walls. Like be, have that connection like we talked about. And um, mm -hmm. it's really neat. Absolutely. So you're you've, neat. <laughs> I'm neat. Like yeah. I'm a clean freak. <laughs> you're just neato. Oh, thank you. Hey, let's, neato. That's kind of cool. Let's bring neato back. Oh gosh. Let's make people say, you want to? Let's, neato. let's do it. I, I feel like I'm in this weird, I know this has nothing to do with music, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm in this weird point in my life between being younger and being older and I'm there too. Yes, rock on. So I, I feel very awkward, especially when I'm speaking with younger people. Like I just don't know what to say. And so, I mean, is cool still a valid word, or are they all just laughing at me because I'm this old lady saying something's cool? You're right. I, I caught myself um, yesterday working with my my intern who actually helps with the the work on these videos. <laughs> And I said, Coolio. I was like, what am I doing? Like, I don't, I would not say Coolio to anybody else, but, um, he's like 22. And I'm like, how do you, how do you connect with these people? I just, I don't know. I, it's beyond me. It reminds me. me of Paul Rudd. Uh, uh, what movie was that where Paul Rudd, uh, uh, uh. it's like, uh, I love you, man. Have you seen that movie? Yes. I love you, man. And, and Paul Rudd is like, uh, trying to be cool and like making up words and, and it's the exact same thing. It's like Coolio. Or, um, I can't remember exactly what he says now, but it, it, it's the same thing. And, and I felt that too. Like, I'll just say something, but I just plow through that awkwardness, accept it and plow through it. Yeah. Let other people deal with it. Yeah. We're no, we're no longer cool to the younger crowd. And that's just time to accept that, I guess. Well, maybe we're <laughs> rad. Are, Are we, we rad? Are we? We may be rad. Maybe we're not cool, but we're rad now. We're rad. We made it to radness. Hmm. Stellar. Dude. I'll take it. <laughs> that is stellar. <laughs> now I'm going back to the 80s and thinking of all the... Yeah, I was, the, do, I was doing the same, but I was a decade behind. I was in the 70s. Uh, well, I, oh, okay. Are we saying our age? Because I'm... Oh, no. Younger, <laughs> no, I was not. Younger. What? <laughs> I shouldn't be. You say I, I'm starting to get self-conscious about my age. And so I, I feel ashamed now to almost, you know, the number's getting so large that I, I'm feeling that. And I never thought that I would. I never thought that I would get to those. Well, I, I mean, I, I didn't think that I was going to die at an early age or anything like that. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, you know what helps, but, you know, you know, what helps keep you young is um, not only having a toddler, but also uh, playing music. I mean, it's, Absolutely, it's yeah. incredible seeing all of these, um, these guys like, gosh, I don't want to use Bob Dylan as an example. I guess we could, but like Bruce Springsteen and, um, you know, Tom Petty when he was alive, just obviously they're up there in age, but they're still, they've got so much energy that they bring right. to their concerts. Well, and it's just, it Dave, just Dave Matthews, them. you know, like we were talking earlier, uh, Dave Matthews band still still touring after uh, well he's not he's 15? what in his 50s right yeah no i'm thinking like I, yeah. like i saw paul mccartney oh gosh this must have been almost 10 years ago now at um bush stadium in st louis and he's got to be in his 70s now um he was probably like 70 then and it was just i don't think i could have the endurance to do a performance like that so right so I think when it comes to musicians and music, there that age has no limit and age is irrelevant. Right, I agree. Except yeah. for all and, the and, except and, for all the dorky words we use, but aside from that, yeah. I mean, music is it's completely timeless. Yeah, absolutely. Well, some of it, some of it can be, but it it lives forever, and um, that's that's the key. Too. Yes, uh, that one that was a bingo thing for me just now. Um, that's one thing that I just love about music and why I record so much and do so many live streams and, and stuff on YouTube, which you can check out on 
uh, Todd et al. I created that because I play with a lot of different musicians in the area, duos okay. and trios and just different combos. And so et al means with others in, in Latin. Okay. And, so I and we'll, that we'll post it. that for you too so everyone oh, can cool. find it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there's there's some links where you can see the stuff. But point is, um, I've always felt like movies and and uh, and music and you know musicians and performers in general that uh, have their art recorded or uh, you know the audio recorded or video, uh, it makes you immortal. It, it's or a, transcribed it's a, on paper. There's or such a thing. There's music notation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all that or stuff originated. It, it's, uh-huh. uh, it's so cool because you know my my three year old daughter, her grandchildren can know me through my songs and especially the original songs that have a personal value to them. They can, they can know their great, 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 grandfather. Wow. Isn't that something? Maybe they'll even see the show. Yes. Five million years from now. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think uh, media will have taken a completely different turn by then. So who knows yeah. how it'll be happening. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't you play us a song, something you wrote? Okay. I'm, I'm kind of eager to hear something. I, we were talking about your process. Oh, oh my. <laughs> there goes the lamp. <laughs> I love lamp. <laughs> You're talking about the process, so let's hear it. Are you going to play two guitars at once? Yeah, this is. I'm going to play this guitar with this guitar. Watch this. Innovation, baby. Oh, gosh. Please don't damage the wood on that beautiful new guitar. Oh, it would be well worth it to innovate the whole sound of the music industry <laughs> by playing a guitar with a guitar. Gosh, I'm just knocking stuff all over. <laughs> Here we go. Wow. I'm going to put that right there. And I'm going to move this up and not break it. I've decided, I made the decision that I'm not going to break anything. So Good. I was thinking I should probably break something while I'm here. But no, I'm not going to do that. Not this time. Oh, I'm sorry about that noise. Okay. Here we go. So tell us a little bit about your song, like maybe when you wrote it, what it means. Well, as I mentioned before, um, I've written a, sorry if that was loud. Is that loud, like moving it like that? Okay, I won't touch it. We're good. Um, As I mentioned, I've written a ton of songs. Uh, A lot. And so, so honestly, I don't know what song I'm going to play. Uh, what do you want to hear? A little slow down uh, groove or something upbeat? Uh, what did I play first? Oh, yeah, I played What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong is what that was. Um, I mean, I think everyone has a different interpretation of what all of that means. So, um, let's see. I mean, I could say yeah. something. I think, yeah, so you did play What a Wonderful World. That was definitely more of a slow moving style very quiet how about a, how about a medium one? Medi- yes let's let's see what your medium is um i think that would be we'll go medium good to have something check okay <clears throat> this is a song called roy g biv you know roy g biv it's the colors of the rainbow r o y g b i v Yes, I, I think we I think we all okay. learned that in the third grade, but thank you for that science okay. lesson. <laughs> I just passed the third grade uh, when I wrote this song and had to Google it. <laughs> so that's an acronym. Are you into acronyms or something? Acronym, that's what it is. Yeah, I guess I kind of am because I, uh, I also have a song called KISS, Keep It Simple, Stupid, K-I-S-S. Okay. I guess I could play that one. Which, which would you rather well, I've hear? Heard, I've already heard that one. Um, I think you, you posted yes. that okay. online. Um, oh, yeah. So why don't you play oh. the Roy G. Biv? All right. This is it. And I'm sorry, what, is it actu- what does it stand for in your actual title? That's it. Just That's it? Colors. Okay. okay. Kind of arbitrary, really. That's the thing with names. I just kind of, I'll write the song without a name and then suddenly I'll just say, well, that word is in the song. I'll use that as the title. So that works. Um, and what year did you write this? Uh, this one is one of my more recent songs. So 
I just wrote this a few months, well, probably about a year ago. Okay. Um, and so it's, uh, hmm. I never explain my songs really. I rarely explain them. Um, and sometimes, you know, like I said, it just kind of channels through and a lot of them are coded in metaphors and, and uh, you know, but there's always deep meaning that I feel in it, but I always kind of leave it up open to interpretation to the listener. Uh, but as far as what this one, this one's kind of about just taking advantage of life while you have a life to take advantage of. Living your best life. Absolutely. is a desire Stop making yourself so tired of this life Don't keep it all inside the way you think it's safe from harm Make a break Run while you can, let it go, you'll get it back. Make a break, you love while you can, and be grateful. All this I say, staring back at myself in the mirror. Nobody gets out of life and lie. 
Nobody gets out of life alive But our souls survive That's wild applause. Thank you. Thank you. I loved it. Cheers. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that with us. I appreciate you. It's always weird, you know, playing songs and and uh, waiting for that. <laughs> Did I give you enough applause? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's much more than I've been, you know, I've been doing these live streams on Queen City Shout Open Mic. Yeah, uh, thing on on Facebook Live and and it's it's so it's just so it's such a weird like an oxymoron just this weird like Twilight Zone that you're in for about two seconds after you finish a song and there's no no one applauding you know you you pour your heart out in a song and, <sighs> <laughs> and then just silence. I hope you like that. <laughs> you, know, you don't really know. Yeah, this whole uh, uh, virtual existence we're all living in is quite interesting. But, America, I had it right. But we're all in it together, so eventually we'll come out of it, hopefully alive. Yes, that would be good. Not too damaged, but yeah, I think uh, totally understand that. It's just, you know, we're all so isolated, but... The thing you have to you have to remain positive and realizing you are reaching out to people and um, oh yeah you know and I've I've listened to some of your stuff kind of after after the fact and um, you know whether it's a live recording or you know pre recorded or whatever it's still gaining your audience in the same way so yeah you yeah, are appreciated I've, I've had a lot of a lot of fun and uh, you know. There's hundreds of people watching as opposed to going to a bar where you might get 20 people coming in and your background music. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, that's the super cool thing. The super rad, uh, thing, rad and cool thing. Coolio. It's super cool. It's neato. It's neato and coolio is what it is, <laughs> uh, that you can pop online and reach 500 people Yep. And, and play like three songs and not have to lug the gear, uh, you know, tote it there and, break it down and spend three hours on the setup and break down and then drive home. You can just press record and, and reach a whole it's bunch easy. of people. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, I think you could get, um, you could probably easily find a, a clapping track to play for yourself when you're done with your songs. Yes. I thought about that. <laughs> you could insert that. I mean, so it could be part of your show. It's like the, the 90s sitcoms with the awful laugh track in the back. Yes. <laughs> Where they would just crack up at nothing. Uh, just yeah. ridiculous lines that were barely jokes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I need that. Yeah. You should. You Where should I'm look like, into that. Say something really serious. I, but I would use it inappropriately. Some sound you know, effects. I would say, I'd be like, I would, you know, this, my dad bought me this right before he died. <laughs> With the laugh track. I would use it uh, in the wrong way, probably. That's okay too. There's that humor and silliness factor to it. That's. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the emojis. You know the. The smiley or the or the thumbs up and and once in a while when you're playing a, a live stream gig somebody will press the wrong one and it's an <laughs> angry face <laughs> scrolls up and I'm like and then all of a sudden it sets the fire off in me and I'm like what what, what did are you, you angry? do yeah you don't yeah. like my song they really like hate that song 
<laughs> and then somebody's just like, I'm sorry, I exited. My kid came in the room and actually pressed this, the frowny face, you know? <laughs> uh, I don't know where I was going with that one at all. Oh, that's okay. I, I think okay. We, we, have, we had one starting point and then – as I have noticed a trend with us so far, it's like a tree. <laughs> We've got the trunk of the tree, which is supposed to be what we're talking about, but then very quickly it branches off. But it becomes right. this big, this big thing. Uh, the whole tree has got all the leaves and stuff, so it's a full, it's a full thing. So it's, it's good. I hear you. It's good. I like that. That's a. I love analogies, and that's that's. Is that one okay? Nine. That, that tree. One Are you going to steal we're, that? We're creating, <laughs> and you know what is happening right now? Tree we're of life. Roots. <laughs> As, as above, so below, and, and we're, we've got the roots. We got roots now. Do we together? And and we're 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 in the midst of something beautiful blossoming. <sighs> wow, you just took that <laughs> to a whole nother no place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ugh. the blossom of our conversation smells so sweet. Oh. <laughs> that gets creepy when you when you Is sniff it? into a microphone, <laughs> doesn't it? A little bit. <laughs> no one wants to be sniffed. <laughs> Not right. even the dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. This has been fun. This has Thank been you. fun. I feel like we could just keep going on, but I'm sure our audience is ready for yeah. lunch or whatever they're on to yeah. next. <laughs> yeah. Well, we should do this again. Yes. We'll have um, episode two, 2.0. Yeah. Yeah, maybe the, the the sequel, and maybe it'll be a trilogy. So Ooh. like the next one will just be super dark. The bad guy wins, but at the end of it, it there's a little cliffhanger, and then in the third one, you know, the tree, boom! <laughs> it it, blow, it, just, it I don't know what it does, but it does something really uh, rad and. Uh, it, it sounds it sounds a little too uh, sci-fi for me, but I like. I want to give away the ending. I but. I like where you're going. That's very creative. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Todd. Someone should so, take the microphone away. We're going to take the mic away now. Okay. So tell our audience, um, where can we find all of these wonderful songs you've written? How can we download or buy mm-hmm. them or listen? We can get a hold of me and uh, we can do a Zoom like this and I can just play you some tunes. Jeez. Yeah. How much does that cost? <laughs> mm, well, it'll, it'll really cost you a lot of awkward conversation <laughs> and probably two hours okay. or so. Of me rambling and so are you are you pr- promoting that you are offering I don't know private <laughs> Maybe shows for people for free hey, there we go maybe oh we just uh, got another branch going well, you could totally Maybe market that I mean I know people are I mean doing all sorts of stuff yeah. but the other thing we need yeah. I think we need some like you should just set up and start and play outside somewhere and I think people would flock oh, to I've you you have so I've, you've done that yeah um, my friend Eric Rousseau uh, on a phenomenal per- percussionist and Matt Struber, bass player in my band. We we, um, we went to uh, Phelps Grove Park a while back and did a, a live stream thing on um, on Queen City Shout open mic uh, that was developed by a guy named Eddie, Eddie Gamusio. Okay. A phenomenal person that does a lot for the arts and, and music in the area. Um, but uh, we did that. And, and nice. it's so cool because people were walking in the background. It's when the quarantine was still on. So we made sure and said, Are you guys not quarantined? People. Or is it? Um, you're phasing out. I, I think we're phasing out, I guess. You know, uh, um, we're not on lockdown, I guess. That's the thing, right? But there's no, I, I mean, like, entertainment type places aren't open yet. No, no, no that's that's not happening yet. Well, we've uh, got, fact, we, we've kind of gone through a weird thing here in St. Louis. So we finally started reopening. I guess we're in phase one. Phase two is coming, I think, on the 15th, which will allow like gyms and pools and stuff to open. But this week, because of everything else going on in the world, we have had a curfew. So 9 p.m. curfew has been in place. So we we have like these more strict guidelines than we did during the um, the quarantine when all the businesses were forced shut. Ironic. That's so, so crazy. I know. And so it's just we're kind of going through this whole weird thing. What a weird time. So I'm glad that Springfield is um, opening up and not doing well, the opposite it's, with curfews. It's so it's, you know, that's that's weird to me. What do they do if you go outside? Do they arrest you or just say go home? Or I guess it I don't know. So it, it's for this the um it's for St. Louis City specifically and not the county. Huh. 
Um, oh, but some municipalities are making their own curfew, um, depending what their needs are. But for instance, for myself, and maybe I'm giving away too much information here, but I live literally one house away from the city line. And so, <laughs> so like, I wouldn't want to go outside and walk, you know, up the block or anything because I, there's a lot of police patrolling and I, I don't know what would happen. Um, I'm sure yeah. they would just give you a warning, say, Hey, go home. It's more aimed towards, um, those that are, um, you know, doing things they're not supposed to be doing, of course. Right. But yeah, it, it's just a weird, a very- it, it's just a weird thing. Like we just got through this whole quarantine and now we have a curfew. Like what is this world yeah, we're really living in? Yeah. We're not through the, you know, I saw a meme the other day that said, uh, um, Oh, are we on the riots now? I still have my COVID-19 decorations up or something like that. And it's like, um, I, th- I think that's still a thing. It is um, still a thing, it's- but the, it's just been completely washed out of conversation and, um, I mean, there's still, yeah, still my, some media of it, but less, and I don't follow the media terribly much, but, um, there's just less good. circling around with it. Um, but yeah, COVID's still real. So be safe out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just because yeah, some, uh, just because other things are taking place in the world does not mean it's, um, not as harmful. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, and it varies. It's the rules vary county by county. I remember, uh, Oh, Cinco de Mayo, actually, a couple of days before that, there's a place in Ozark, Missouri, um, that wanted me to play. And I just assumed that it was canceled because everything else was canceled or rescheduled. Sure. And they called me two days before and said, I, I, we're on. I was like, what? And so I looked up wow. online and looked, looked at Greene County, which Springfield is in, and it said no live performances, nothing uh, over like 20 people in a room and all this kind of stuff. Sure. And oh, I said, I, I can't do that, dudes. I can't violate and, and you know, um, publicize that kind of a thing for myself and and they said well no look at christian county because that's where ozark is it's just a barely it's like 15 minutes away from where i live okay but it's county technically and so they had completely different rules and so i went and played the gig and there was a, a ton of people there but they were wow. all following the social distancing guidelines yeah um and people were waiting for like two hours outside to to get in oh know, my goodness people, were, people are starved for entertainment yes and connectivity with each other um but I think safety above all else should be performed, you know? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, I, I don't want to get too much into the, <laughs> the, yeah. the yeah. policy. I mean, I, I try and remain neutral. I, I am a music right. educator. So I, <laughs> high five on that one. <laughs> high five you on it. Yeah. But I, you I'm know, just- <laughs> but yeah, I'm, but yeah, safety is important. So is music though. So I, yes. to, comment on that in a constructive way. I, I'm so grateful that we have these opportunities, not only to connect like this, but also with the the Facebook lives and the open mic stuff you're doing. And people are just publishing music all over and it's just been explosive. And, um, yeah. you know, that's really helped everyone have a sense of normalcy and, um, give them something positive for their mental and emotional health. That's 100%. so important. So that's, that's exactly the truth. Yeah. And I've, I've been really thankful to be a part of that. And, you know, people say, well, thank you for, for playing the music yeah, and to thank you. providing, you know, inf- uh, some entertainment for people that are bored at home, but no, it's the other way around. Thank you for, for watching it and for giving me, uh, you know, uh, I mentioned I was in therapy a long time ago, uh, for about a year or so, and then wasn't, uh, and that was a long time ago. But this is my therapy. This is, you know, mm-hmm. playing music. It's so cathartic and uh, and it's a way for me to express myself. And when I don't do it, you know, I get a little cranky, I think. I don't know. <laughs> but, but I don't feel right. Uh, and so this has given that outlet and provided that um, that that much needed release um, and connectivity without actually being in the same room as people. And so I appreciate every one of you that's watching this and it's sincerely. And we appreciate you. That's the audience. <laughs> oh, wow. I that's the- <laughs> We're connecting on a telepathic level, I think. Okay. I heard them say that they appreciate me too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I okay. guess uh, we should call it a day. All right. Thank you for being here. It's been really an honor, like, talking to you and you sharing you. all of the stuff you love about music and both uh, positive stuff and some of your struggles. I think that, you know, 
everyone goes through it and it just makes you you it makes you human so yeah cheers to that and um yeah i guess i guess that's it for today right on well i appreciate you so much this was a lot of fun yeah Thank you. that was todd osborne springfield missouri based musician guitar player songwriter singer and we had a lot of fun chatting about all things music today so thank you todd for joining us on our episode of coffee conversations we will be posting links to all of his pages and so that you can download his music get his songs and see some videos so find those in the description so thank you again for joining us be sure to like us subscribe support and share us all that fun stuff and we will see you next time thanks for tuning in this has been your host jen lebanc billharts with shock city school of music coffee conversations